Hi, my name is Jeff Rosatarski, and I'm going to be talking about a program called TouchViz today. So I was reading a paper written in the early 2000s called Dust and Magnet, which involves, um, on a computer monitor, putting each point of data, um, like a row in Excel, um, as a little circle, and giving you magnets that you can drag around to pull points based upon certain values. Um, and this was cool, but I didn't think it was all that tangible. You're using a mouse, you have a monitor in front of you. It's not terribly physical. On the other hand, we have something like this, an iPad, which is physical. You can tilt it, you can touch it, you can interact with it in new ways. And so I thought, why don't we interact with data using an iPad in completely different ways, tangible ways. Um, so I present to you TouchViz, um, which is an interface for interacting with multivariate data. Um, when I say multivariate data, I mean rows in an Excel spreadsheet with a lot of columns. So you see here a bunch of points. Each point is in this case a brand of cereal and a large data set about cereals. Um, and I can do things like I can attract them based upon certain values. So ones that are higher in protein get pulled to my finger faster. I can filter them. So right now I'm setting anyone with less than 100 calories is going to pass through this filter I'm dragging between my fingers. I can then set a wall to keep them from passing through. I tilt the iPad and I can allow them through or not. And finally, once you've gotten a set of data, you can then set a histogram, which is a statistical way to see the distribution of your data. So now I want to find cereals that are higher or lower in fat, and they automatically self-assemble into this structure. So now you know I have some that are low in fat and have few calories. I can double click. Oh look, maybe shredded, shredded wheat is a cereal for me. That's way cool, but this will let you do even more than that. So I'm going to turn up the gravity, push everything down to the bottom just to clean up my workspace. Now I'm going to draw a histogram of calories. So this is going to graph all of the points out based on how many calories they have. Some cereals at the top have a lot of calories, like raisins in this one. Some don't. I can then do attraction to see all sorts of interesting effects. So I can find out that ones that are high in fat get pulled to my finger up here, more so than the ones that down here which are low in calories. Um, so high calories means high fat. On the other hand, I can see more interactive things. So the ones that are low in calorie and high in calorie get pulled to my finger when it's dragging on proteins. Um, and so eventually you can dig into your data and discover all sorts of really neat features just by doing very physical things. They're real physical points. You're touching, dragging, moving around, and you're coming up with all sorts of new discoveries that you'd never thought you could before because data is now tangible. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nir and this is John. Hello. And we're presenting to you Flight Stripes, the awesome app that allows you to explore um, domestic flights in the United States and see um, how delayed they were and compare between airlines destinations and um, airports. Right, so uh, we, uh, the FAA actually makes all this data available for free, so we were able to download it, and, and the app um, contains, I think, about 3.2 million flights, so there's a um, pretty extensive set of um, data to work with in the app. Um, so I guess we'll just sort of launch into sort of what it does. So um, app launches, and um, some, uh, kind of an empty screen here initially, but let's, um, let's get something on it. So let's say like, we want to look at it from Boston, um, to San Francisco, and um, let's just hit graph there. And so it goes to the database and it quickly in the background, uh, so it doesn't block inter interaction, draws all those flights um, on the screen. So this is, an, this is a display of flights based on date. So at the top here, as you can see, is January and uh, to December, and the app allows you to um, zoom in and really get into the, the data and you can uh, eventually here see um, actual um, flight numbers and sort of um, how delayed they are. And if you click on them, uh, you can see um, more details about the flight and actually it tells you why it was delayed. In this case, um, it had 62 minutes of its total delay were caused by an NAS delay, uh, which means that the tower um, basically caused it because of maybe mild weather or some situation like that. You know, do you want to show the, the, a comparison, how that would work? Yeah, so let's say uh, you want to fly between Boston and San Francisco and you want to compare two carriers. So what you can do is, first of all, you can um, click on frame, which allows you to see the whole uh, view again. Click on sort by carrier, so now you'll see the flight sorted by carriers. You can see JetBlue, Continental, United, and so on. Then you can click on compare and have a second view that shows you, and, and you can research and do uh, the same search for a different carrier. So let's say I'm going to do Boston to uh, San Francisco again. Um, and for the left one, I'll choose JetBlue, and for the right one, I'll choose United Airlines. 
So, Netherlands, right, and graph. Yeah, so and graph on both of them. So, and this view you can see that if I was buying a ticket now, I would buy a ticket from United Airlines since they have much less delays and much more flights around time, as you can see in this view. And you can actually zoom in and both and compare, and each one is independent. All right, so when thinking about a place to go to, there's a ton of information out there and about a million different ways of getting it. So for our application, we're trying to take all these scattered information from all over the web and aggregate them into one immersive experience for the end goal of just visualizing a place. So let's go right into the demo. All right, so say you're going to a place. Um, this place is near Central Park. Um, as soon as you get um, reach the startup screen, you're presented with a lot of information, um, a lot of images about the place, as well as text. Our, our goal is to get a lot of dynamically generated content from the web. For example, um, these images pulled from Instagram are images of this place. You can kind of get a feel of what the place looks like, as well as you get tips from Foursquare in order to get kind of what people are saying about it. Um, you can get the number of check-in counts to see kind of popularity. You can um, as well as look at um, like popular words that are demonstrated about this place. All this content is uh, dynamically generated from the web. And um, as long as you have um, more information from these APIs, um, you'll keep displaying. So um, Anurag can go into more specific information about the so, so the idea of our app was to help people explore places anywhere around the world. Um, the idea is to allow people to, let's say, go to New York and find a unique or exclusive restaurant or a bar or even a cafe. Um, hey, I found this place. It looks it's pretty interesting. Interesting. What, so you can see, um, we just were exploring around New York and we find this place. It gives us um, a lot of visuals about what this place looks like. All of our tiles are really interactive and we can click on them and like get further information about the place. So, for, for example, this one says beach. And if I tap on it, uh, it'll, it'll tell me more about um, why this place is associated with the word beach. And you can see there's some tips saying what, this, uh, what context this word was used in. Um, this provides us a little more insightful information because this is a bar and um, this word says beach. So we can come to know by looking at the images and things like that, that this bar is located in, in a sandy beach on, on the shore of New York. Um, we can also click on all the other tiles to get, let's say, four square tips tips about the place, what people have to say. Um, we even get different you know, times of day, um, pictures and uh, pictures across seasons even. Each tile has its own kind of full view in our visualization and is able to give us um, more information about the place. And like we mentioned, everything is dynamically generated from the web, so obviously you can search for new places. So let's just go to like a different area, like we're just typing in Boston right now. And it automatically brought us to the Boston area. And you can see all the different venues that are available here. So let's just like go to a place. All right, so this is Faneuil Hall. So let's just go there. And it pulled up all these images. So let's say we wanted to know how this place looked across various seasons. We have this tile called uh, a seasonal view. And you can click on this tile and let's say it'll load up, you know, uh, images across from different seasons for us. So we have, you know, summer, winter, um, spring and fall and you can visualize and see how places look across different seasons maybe cities don't change that much but uh, parks or like places in colder climate have a lot more snow visually available you can see how the trees have lights you know during um, holiday time you guys want to wrap up with something yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I pretty much like we just really try to um, try to give people a sense and feel of a certain place that you really can't get by going through and looking through other APIs, at least as easily as we try to give it. So like you just go to a place, you just kind of get a good sense and feel and um, you're just really able to explore and find a, like a lot about new places around around you. Yeah, we've aimed to kind of give you the people's perspective rather than, you know, what critics have to review about a place. And these are gathered from user submissions and users having posted information to these various uh, sources. OK, so I was inspired by the um, a tree map, which is a way of looking at data visually and um, getting a feel for how big each one of the various parts are. And so I forked an old open source project and sort of modernized it for iOS. And what I have is tree mapper. So, um, 
tree mapper uh, takes in a bunch of data. In this case, it's a CSV file. And what you're looking at is the top 100 most visited sites um, from the Nielsen group. And you can see, for example, media slash news takes up a significant portion of the internet traffic. And um, this entire thing is built in a scroll view, so you can pan around and look at the various different portions. And you can tap to drill down, and you can see what makes up this category. Um, in the media news category, you have Fox, BBC, CBS. And you can just tap to zoom in, drill down on different categories, see what makes up of them, and then tap to zoom back out, like this. And I've also made it very general, so uh, you can switch between different data sets. So if you swipe, here you are looking at a data set of the amount of GDP that certain countries spend on military expenditures. So for example, you can see that uh, American countries tend to spend a lot of their GDP uh, proportion-wise on uh, various military expenditures. And if I were to drill down to that, I can see the USA takes up a big portion of it. Tap again to zoom back out. Tap on Europe. It drills down. And tap again. So there's two different interactions. There's the pan around, which just looks at whatever the current level is. And then there's the tap. Um, which zooms in or zooms back out depending on whichever category you're on.